I feel like if you try to be healthy to the point where you just restrict yourself from everything, whether it's, I'm never going to eat chocolate or I'm never going to eat sugar or I'm never going to drink beer. How sustainable is that? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, the quarantine editions of, it, of the episode. I'm your not-so-humble host, Carp, and joining us today is our first ever American guest. We have Emily, also known as Baroness Beer. She is a mom, a fiancé, and a health coach. Hello. Hi, thank you very <laughs> much for uh, letting me interview you today and taking time out of your obviously busy schedule. <laughs> so. Oh, anytime. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to share a drink. Uh, now I understand we'll mention what you're doing after. Uh, you're not mm -hmm. drinking alcohol tonight and that's fine, uh, but you are drinking cat craft beverage. Let my viewers know what you're drinking. It is alcohol. It's a hard kombucha, but oh. it's not, it's not a beer. Um, I'm doing a no sugar challenge. So this is carb free just for a week. So it's, it's like my backup cheat when I'm not drinking beer. When you hold the can, I can sort of like fool myself. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and, and where is it from? Like where are the brewers uh, and, and all that stuff? This is Flying Embers out of California. And this is their wild berry flavor. Very cool. I have from uh, slightly off the island of Montreal. It's in Boucherville or from Toltec, uh, microbrasseur or brasseur artisan. It's called Euphoris or Euphoria. It is a uh, double dry hop IPA with Eldorado, Cryo, Amarillo, and Citra. And as nice. we do on the show, we do a virtual toast. A toast. Cheers. Oh, I got a cling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tasty. That looks tasty. Oh, nice that's very tasty. Yeah, I recently had a um, New England from one of our previous interviews, Castle Brewery out of Castle, Castleman, Ontario. And mm. he's like making a series like New England IPA number one, two, three, four, five. And I had 37. I'm like, this is one of the best New England <laughs> IPAs I've ever had. So. Wow. 37 yeah. that's a charm yeah they're great awesome uh so yeah you're a first ever american which is great you know uh us north american folk have to stick together so that's right it's, it's nice to see that um let the folks know your uh your instagram beer story to start uh so it's baroness beer and i've had you know a few different instagrams over the years some focused on different things and as my love for craft beer grew when I saw some of the Instagrams out there I figured well why not give it a shot myself so I guess it's about two years ago now I started it and uh it's I guess because of the pandemic I was really able to spend more time on it than I probably would have so I was able to you know have it grow and meet a lot of cool uh, craft beer people like yourself out there awesome that's great to hear and I do love your daily stories of, of you walking your fur babies those are uh, <laughs> those are fun so yeah it's, it's like a daily habit now <laughs> Now, uh, do you remember how you discovered like where your craft beer journey began? Yeah, you know, um, I was never like a huge alcohol person per se, but if I was drinking, beer was normally my thing. But I guess, you know, when you're in college or your 20s, it's never really the best beer. Um, I thought Miller Lite was fancy. Um, and uh, I guess one of my trips, I took a trip to Ireland by myself uh, when I was in my 20s. And then just by being there, I'm like, I'm not going to drink uh, a Bud Light like that was out everywhere. I'm going to try something else. So I had some Smittix and some Carlsberg and then um, having Guinness right there. Then I was like, this is all I'm drinking from now on. And so for years, all I drank was Guinness, it, whether it was the hottest day in July, didn't matter. Um, and not that that's craft beer per se, but I think that just sort of opened up like I love stout. So then when I saw like some places had other stouts, so I was like, I'll give that a try. Um, so really it was like my craft stouts that got, had me into it for a while and then you know ex when you're out in some place some place has a lot of stouts some place not so much and then you know you'd start trying other things so it's still my favorite type but you know obviously I'll drink IPAs and you know pilsners and sours and whatever else as well that must have been wild for you though going from like the dry nitro infused Guinness <laughs> to like a local stout that's like coffee forward or or, you know, chocolate. It's like, wait a second. Right. You can do things to this? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Maple, maple yeah. syrup. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> as a Canadian, yes. Maple sure syrup you know. is very much. It's in our rye beer. It's in our regular rye, red ales. It's They try and infuse maple syrup them. every season yeah. here. So. Yeah. It's great. Awesome. Uh, Baroness Beer, how'd you come up with that? Uh, you know, 
I don't know if it's because the the poet in me likes alliteration, but I was looking for something to, you know, that was, it was a female account, but, and I know I'm not being condescending to the, cause there's awesome women out there who do, but I didn't want to use babe or chick or girl. I, you know, as a former soldier, I was like, that's just not my lane. Like, you know, so I, you know, not that Baroness is whatever, but you know, I like democracy and not a Royal, but I just thought that was something that I was more comfortable with using. As a kid from the 80s, it's like, I see Baroness, I'm like, oh, she means the bad girl in G.I. Joe. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well. I, do, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's <laughs> no, not, a bad not thing. at all. Yeah. You got the same, like, the dark, long hairstyle. It's the same thing, so it works. There you go. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to use that uh, angle more now. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I wanted to bring this up. Uh, you are a, a fitness coach. You mm-hmm. do talk a lot about beer and fitness. Uh, what What makes you see that, like, as a whole? You know, obviously, beer is full of carbs and, and sugars and mm-hmm. stuff and you want to stay healthy. So what, what kind of gave you that journey of, of combining the two, like earn your hashtag, earn your beer, where, where did you decide to be part of that? To me, I guess it just came natural. Um, I've been a track coach for, I guess, 20 years now. So high school, you know, people that became all Americans, world-class athletes, Olympians. So like I take coaching and health and fitness really seriously. Um, but I do, I do like beer. Um, and uh, I feel like if you, try to be healthy to the point where you just restrict yourself from everything, whether it's, I'm never going to eat chocolate or I'm never going to eat sugar or I'm never going to drink beer. How sustainable is that? You know, some people can do it forever for a life, but most people can't. Um, I also want to like, you know, as much as I love beer, um, you know, I'm, I'm a mom. I want to teach my kids that you need a healthy relationship with alcohol, right? I don't want them around people getting wasted. Um, you need to like, you know, you need to find a balance. So I think there's, if you find that respect of uh, you're going to treat your body right, it's okay if you have a beer or two now and then it's, it's not going to be the end of the world, but let, let's find where that balance balance is and enjoy the best of both worlds. There is like the healthy beer lifestyle, like you're a part of beer and fitness, uh, but a lot of breweries are doing either zero alcohol, low carb and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you see that becoming very popular in the craft industry? You know, it probably will be just because whatever it, it responds to what people want, right? Like almost all craft breweries around here now have hard seltzers, right? I'm not a fan. Like I'm drinking this hard kombucha because of my no sugar challenge this week, but I, I'm not I'm not a seltzer person. You know, if a brewery asks me, hey, try it, I'll try it. Um, I know there's less sugars and this and that, but you know, I'm not anti-carb. <laughs> so I'll drink, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, so I'll drink the beer. But I think, um, I think if the demand is there, um, I think craft breweries have been pretty responsive, you know, to um, what people want and, and what, what the market says. And that's, you know, that's why they're doing these hard seltzers now. So who knows? It, it could be part of it. I just hope that there's still some purists that just do some good solid beers if, you know, yeah. if they do want to try these new things as well. Yeah, for sure. It's like finding that Trappist one and you're just like, just stick to making the Trappist beers. Ex- exactly. Don't, don't make an IPA. Don't make, stick with the Trappist, stick with right? the Belgium's. Let's, let's yeah, so, that. sometimes more isn't better. Sometimes simple is where it's at. Awesome. Uh, and with the um, with your your obviously your your fitness and coaching and stuff, uh, you do have a link tree including things mm-hmm. like Crafty Beast, the coaching team, uh, yes. the Intox Detox, and then just generally like mixing beer and health and, and motivating people. What what made you decide to stick with that? You know, even with just oh. being the track coach. We know it's for coaching track for for twenty years, um, and then the pandemic hit. So coaching at a school was not going to happen. Um, and as the pandemic hit, I was not moving as much as I normally did. And I had no races to train for. Um, so one of my friends um, who I used to coach with um, does like um, is a wellness coach for people that do at-home workouts. And I was like, I'm not an at-home workout person. But then I was like, okay, I either do them or like, I can't go to a gym right now. Well, what's mm-hmm. the alternative? Um, so I started that about a year ago. And I'm like, well, you know, what? instead of coaching runners, either whether it's high school or whatever Olympics, any of that, I'm going to just coach ordinary people. And it's people who aren't trying to win a gold medal or wouldn't be first in a race. They're just trying to earn their beer. They're trying just to be healthy. Maybe they're trying to lose a few pounds. Maybe they just want to get in a good routine. Um, so, you know, I reached out to some of the beer community and I have a team of about a dozen craft beer drinkers and, you know, they do their at home workouts, but we still, connect. And if they have questions, I'm there to guide them and we motivate each other. Um, 
And that's been a lot of fun. The thin tox detox was just, you know, they reached out to me and they tried it and no one wants a hangover. Um, and not that I drink so much. I think that I ever get a hangover. It's good to have just in case, you know, I went to a wedding and I was like, this, this is a day I might have a few too many. So um, something that was all natural. So I was like, since that was my vibe, um, I was willing to support that. So they seem to all sort of blend together nicely. Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, like you said, I'm going to a wedding, probably an open bar. I mean, most most <laughs> weddings are open bars. So you're like, right. maybe I could splurge tonight. Oh, God, right? what did I do to myself? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You Waking say up on the gi- floor, the couch. It's like, yep. <laughs> I'm going to drink water between them, you know, and that doesn't always happen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's true. It's that's like, my oh, song they're playing. I got to yeah. get a drink and dance. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sure the soda will totally cut out the rum I'm consuming <laughs> with on top of it. So I'll have energy and be drunk. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah. Uh, personally, whenever I'm at a wedding, unless the, the person isn't craft beer, it's just, it's it's hard alcohol yeah. mixed with, with uh, mixers. Isn't that something? So. Like, I've been to, and I'm not going to call out people, but I've had friends that are craft beer people, and then I go to the wedding, and it's just Heineken. Mm. And I'm like how did you not work this out? You know, like this is, this is serious, yeah. you know, and not, not, you know, but you know, places have what they have and that's it. But uh, so when it comes to your Instagram, I do love how a lot of your posts, it's you holding the beer with something about nature in the background. Mm-hmm. Where does, where did that come from where you wanted to combine beer is, is generally a very natural product unless it's one mm-hmm. of the big boys what made you decide, you know, craft beer and nature is this combination that I want for my Instagram? Right. I don't think from the beginning, I don't think that was the plan. Um, I would have probably had a different handle, I guess, if that was the plan. But I guess it just sort of emerged into that because I was always looking like, you know, what do I want in the photos? I didn't want a bunch of beer selfies. That just wasn't my vibe. Um, you know, and I was like, you know, do I pair them with bags or objects? Some people do little action figures. Um and I, I like being outside. I think being outside is so good for our health and our mental state. You know, you see me walking my dogs, right? And being out there. Um, and just when I do see flowers, I'm not the best gardener. I wish I was. Um, you know, I think it's sort of, you know, the 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 paradox of the industrial can versus the natural flower. And sometimes I try to pair the colors, sometimes I don't. Um, but I just think it, you know, it sort of reminds me just to breathe and enjoy you know, stop and smell the roses, so to speak, enjoy those moments. Um, and, and that's really what I think the craft beer community is a lot about is just finding ways to enjoy those moments. So it just seemed to sort of evolve and work out that way. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of aluminum cans. Um, I recently read a study that roughly 75% of the aluminum ever created is still being used today. Isn't that amazing? So so it's like, that's awesome. I, I know bottles, they do have like a life of like, you know, six to 10 beers can go through a bottle, but mm-hmm. just cans alone. You're like, Oh, I could bring a can to the beach. I don't have to worry about like it breaking and then me shoveling. Oh. Like, no, yeah. it's cans. I know there, there's some holdouts for certain beers, which still, be, you know, that's something that belongs in a bottle that you have with a bottle share type thing. But right. cans in general are, are amazing. And whenever I, I head down to either America or, or outside Quebec, I'm cans first, unless it's go. that special, you know, Oh, here's the bourbon barrel age, 10% oh, beer yes. that comes out once a year. And it's like, okay, yeah. that, that's Yeah, good. those fancy stouts are often in bottles. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So no, it's great. And, and, you know, recycling and we're trying to keep nature going. Obviously we're trying to oh, yeah. better ourselves as humanity. So just keep using cans as long as you can. <laughs> awesome. Uh, have you collabed uh, when it comes to your, either your beer fit or your Instagram, have you collabed with mm-hmm. any breweries? Um, I don't know if I'd say collab, Uh, a few breweries have reached out and sent me some beers and said, Hey, if you don't mind either giving us feedback or sharing a story or a post. So I've done that with probably, you know, a half dozen or so regular craft breweries, a figure like, um, I did some stories for Sapporo when they're having a a new, uh, Sapporo pure. It's like, I guess their version of the Mick ultra. So, you know, it was a fitness. I don't know if it's really craft beer, but I'm like, all right, it, it plays with the, with the healthy lifestyle game. So I'll play along. But, um, so as I've grown over the past year, um, I've had more opportunities for collabs, which has been, which has been exciting, actually. I mean, it's one of the best benefits of this really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any local breweries that you go to have like a run club or a bicycle club or anything like that, that you could see yourself associating with? No, but I would love if one wants to start one. Yeah. 
I would, be a, all, I, would, I would be all about that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe get that out there when, when I'm going to ask you later on about your top five. Maybe you mention like, hey, let's do something yes, together. So. Definitely. Uh, do you see, see yourself ever doing like a, a Cicerone course or like a beer judge certification mm. or anything like that? Or, or are you more like me where you're just like, I enjoy the craft beer. Why really go past enjoying craft beer and, and talking to people and, and talking yeah. about my beer and fitness and stuff? So. Yeah, I really think I mostly just enjoy it. I, I throw around those ideas. My problem is like once I go into something, I'll go like all in. You know, like I just finished another master's degree in history. Is like so that just consumed a lot of my like time and effort. So I'm sort of pausing. I'm like now I think maybe I want my certification in nutrition now that that's being become such a part of my life. Like maybe I'll just play this angle. You know, I thought about that. Like maybe I just want to participate in the beer. So I'm always a little cautious because I know once I make that commitment, it's like I, I, I get in that zone. So for now, I just sort of like you know, making it, keeping it enjoyable. I feel like that would bring, I would, I would love having that knowledge. I just feel like that would come with a lot of stress too. I mm -hmm. want to just enjoy it without being stressed. Yeah. Uh, you're in New Jersey. I'm not going to specify what city, but uh, I see you are a big fan of Magnify Brewery. You do have a lot yes. of stories with them. So beyond them, if I'm visiting your area, what are you like three to five places I must go see? So let's see. So Magnify, obviously, um, I know you said you've been to Brick City. That's definitely one of our favorites. Um, it's only about like maybe 40 minutes from us, so it's not too bad. Uh, there's another one called Icarus in Lakewood, New Jersey. Um, I'm originally from more south New Jersey, closer to like the shore. So mm -hmm. whenever I go to my parents, that's always a nice stop. Um, you know, there's also the shore breweries. I would throw Manaferkin, which is not like, you're not going to find their cans out there, but if you're down to the shore, um, they have the best peanut porter I've, I've had. Um, I like peanut porters. So I would say if you like p peanut porters, go to Manaferkin. Yeah, that, some of those those peanut butter uh, beers, it's like I'm drinking Reese's Pieces. This is fantastic. Right. So yeah, you got to you got to watch that out for sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. What it's safe to travel again worldwide. Mm -hmm. Everybody's we got your immunity or vaccines or whatever, you know, it's, it's safe to exit North America. Uh, like I'm personally not going on a flight anytime soon. I don't want to sit mm -hmm. anything that has recycled air for hours on it. Uh, yeah, I don't but blame when you. it is, when it is safe, when you don't have to wear a mask for six to 10 hours plus on a plane, uh, what are a couple of beer vacations you've never been on, uh, that you'd love to do. And I'm, uh, there's two, I, I ask about now one where, yeah, I gotta, you know, gotta take the, the fiance, the kids and money's a factor. Uh, even mm -hmm. if it's just staying in North America, and then two where I won the Powerball, I can do whatever I want. Like, what are those two beer cations that you'd hmm. love to do? Okay. So with those caveats, we've been to um, San Diego. And we really want to go back, but we have been there. Um, I would love to do, a, you know, an international one, like do the European one. We, there's a, gosh, there's a brewery in New Jersey, Muckraker, that does the, the natural fermentation. And talking to them just makes me want to go and go abroad and where they do some of those natural fermentations. And, um, and I, I would love to do that. I know that'd be expensive. Um, I've never done the Oktoberfest in Germany. Um, all, you know, I'd love to just do all of that. Um, if it wasn't with the kids and money was a factor, I know we're looking, um, I would love to do a Massachusetts beer trip. And I think being the history nerd with the kids, we could do like the Boston and do all the history stuff, but then also maybe do some tree house and some trillium and, mm -hmm. you know, um, places where you can do board games with the kids and not make it all about the beer, but y you have to include that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yes. Well, I, I mean, we spoke pre-show, but, uh, I was in the Meadowlands November, 2019 with my father. So your Thanksgiving, uh, yeah. so just, just before December, and uh, I went to Queen City. No, not Queen City. Queen Brewery in Queens. And oh, I've never been there. A giant warehouse, and there's kids playing um, sandbags, not sandbags, cornhole. Cornhole, and kids yeah. Kids playing cornhole, and I'm just sitting there drinking beer with my father, my my elderly father, and we're just like, this place is awesome. Like, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. we got something like that here in Montreal. It's a giant, uh, like it's a patio that's almost the size of half a football field. And they just have everything for kids going on while mom wow. and dad drink with the dog sitting around. So, yeah, make it family friendly, right? Yeah. That's something you won't see at like just a regular local bar, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't bring the kids there. Yeah. Um, 
so what do you what do you see what's next for your instagram for kind of your your beer venture um your craft beer and fitness where do you see that all kind of going in the next couple of months with things slowly reopening um i just look for things to keep growing um you know uh keep sharing the beers, but keep sharing the stories of health and wealth. Now that gyms are opening up, people might not think that at home workouts are, is important, but you still need to work on your nutrition. You still need to better yourself. You still want to be part of a good community. And as I think people do return to the office, that's going to bring a whole nother level of stress. Um, and it's going to be another reason just to ground us and to make sure, you know, you're doing your routine, whether it's you work out in the morning or you stretch in the evening or how much water are you drinking? Um, so I just want to, you know, be part of everything as it evolves and, and, and be flexible and, and hopefully we keep growing the community and, um, and sharing the knowledge we have. So sharing the, the fun, the appreciation, but then also sharing the knowledge and the, the motivation and all that good stuff. Awesome. Um, I've got no other questions for you. This has been a fantastic talk. I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule, obviously. Um, yeah, this has been fun. And if you have anything to promote, uh, let my viewers know where they can find you and, and things you're promoting and stuff like that. Yeah, I would just, you know, love to connect. I love connecting with as much as the, the beer community as possible. Um, if you think maybe you'd want to join um, our Crafty Beast and learn more about your wellness journey while still drinking beer, follow me on Instagram, you know, send me a message. I'll get back to you. We'll get you there. But if not, just, you know, just keep living the dream. This has been, this has been great. I'm so, I'm so honored to be the first American on here. This is like a badge I want to wear. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as I've been telling everybody, uh, once it's safe to travel again, and I'm down around your area, or even if it's, I'm back in the middle. Oh, let us know. We got to grab some let beers together. I, I really look forward to actually meeting everybody I've spoken with. Uh, it's mostly been Toronto, which would be great. Cause I could just have a beer festival with the people I've spoken with. Oh, yeah. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm continuing our, our American journey as well. Uh, there's yourself. There's some other podcasters at the USA that I want to speak with. So uh, we're just trying to share each other. I, we live we live on top of each other. Right. So right. we got to stay friends no matter what. Yeah, uh, we're, that's right. We're neighbors. We each other's backs, so. That's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and so uh, Baron of Spear, everything is going to be in the show notes. As for us, it's at All Beer Inside on all social media. Uh, AllBeerInside.com is the website. Merch store should be up eventually. Um, you know, uh, real life, I have to continue working while supporting my podcasting habit. That, so, that's important. Yeah, uh, very important. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. <laughs>